welcome to Add More Zest. It's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids147. And yes, you are seeing right. This is my heaven and earth design. And I'm just going to try and remember how on earth it is that I've flipping open this tablet. I always forget every time whether you've got to swipe up or to the side. Um, but I am going to try and get the next section of this done. It's been needing to come out for a while, this painting. I need to get more done. I've been very lax. So we're going to see how this works as a whip and chat. Because my only thing with the heaven and earth design is often because I am mixing between tapping the screen um, and counting because I've also got to count as to where each of these diamonds go is whether I can do all of that and waffle. I think it's going to take me a bit longer to get through some questions than it might normally have done. I'm also thinking I should move my tablet to the other side. I've tried to move my laptop with all the questions to over, over on a bookcase so that it's not in the way of all the multiple things I need, i.e. Um, my canvas, my tablet and of course one of my big pots of diamonds. I am using a lovely new pen that was gifted to me um, and I have put a section of a glue dot in it. I'm just not sure if it's gone fully enough into the pen. So if it starts causing me problems, I might have to switch it out until I can mess with it later. So I'm, oh, see, I've already forgotten. I'm not on the right part. I want to be on highlight. There we go. So I've done those two across the bottom, done those two, done those two. And this is where it can get confusing for me, you know, to try and make sure that I am both getting the chart right and being able to discuss a question. But we'll see how we go. We can only try, can't we? Have I got any 301? I do. And I've tipped far too many diamonds into my tray for what was required for that little section. And now this is probably where my bag with diamonds is on the wrong side. Now you also may have noticed that I'm using a different coloured tray. It's the first time I've used this colour of tray. Um, but the pictures on the website, because this is a coming soon tray, um, while the pictures were taken in daylight, it, it's very weird how pictures can sort of change a colour and it looks quite turquoise and there is a little bit of a turquoise. Well, see, I see this as mint green. It reminds me of ice cream, um, mint chocolate chip ice cream. It's a mint colour more than a darker turquoise colour. So I did want to use it on this whip and chat so that anybody who is potentially on the wait list or the wait list. Yeah, the list that will tell people when the tray is in stock. Um, they can actually see the true colour. Just in case we don't get a very nice sunny day before they go up for sale because I think it will be this week that everything will be done and the whole roll printed and it ready to go live. I'm expecting it this week. Um, there is a lot of interest and so far the interest does outweigh the number of trays. 
so I apologise in advance for that. We can just only print what we can print, trying to um, keep the different colours coming so that everybody's happy. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, but yeah, at the moment it just says coming soon. I do expect them to sell quickly. I, did, I was kind of hoping that this... Kind of hoping, hoping and not hoping, because good sales are always good. But I was also thinking, you know, that maybe the last one went so quickly because purple is a very popular colour to many people. Um, it's, it's a favourite of a lot of people, and I thought that might be the reason that it sold out quickly. Turns out it's not. You guys just like something that other people don't have. Or is, as say, limited. Um, so yeah, a part of me was thinking that the sales of the likes of this colour would be a bit slower. But they're not going to be. Um, but having said that, we do now have all three of the printers up and running. Even though we bought a third printer a while ago, um, we've had things go wrong with that one, the, the one that arrived that the company needed to fix. And then as soon as we got that one sort of fully up and running, something happened to another one. So we were sort of pinching parts off different printers to keep two going. <laughs> it's awful in this house. Um, but we now have three printers on the go so we are hoping to bring colours around you know lots of different colours out to you guys and then in turn get around to doing some colours again though there will be a time gap between them there's so many colours that people want I don't think there's any way we could do them all but I did want to show you guys what it looks like um, the only thing is, I kind of feel like I need to get a pen with a straightener on it. Let me see if I've got one in here. Oh, I have. It's not got a glue dot, this one. It's only got wax, but it has got a straightener. I do feel the glue dot is, is working really well for dipping my pen into the pot, which is fantastic with this Heaven and Earth designs. Sometimes I actually think it's easier to just dip the pen in the pot than it is to use a tray because there is only a few colours that are getting used there we go I say it's easier and then the next one I go to do it on it won't let me oh, make me out to be a liar pen why don't you um I do find it a lot easier to just dip into the pots with there being so few diamonds that I need for each section because of course this one has so many colours and I nearly forgot then that this row here actually doesn't get any diamonds on it oh and I even forgot what I was saying and you guys will probably pop it in the comments for me below but it will make no difference because I can't read them till after. Got those two, got those two. So what I'm doing is I'm working on my tablet, which has got the Pattern Keeper app. And on this painting, I just like to go down by numbers because I have four cases that hold my diamonds. And I find it much quicker to go in DMC number order and just do the symbols that it tells me to do. And by doing a six by two square, so I'm doing, what, 600 diamonds. Ooh, that's a lot. Um, by doing 600 diamonds at a time, that is a nice size to fit in my screen, on one screen. 
and then I just work around doing each block and marking it off. Plus, on the Pattern Keeper app, if I was doing it by choosing the symbol myself, I would have to keep moving between hitting the search button to search for a symbol and then the marker button to mark it off. Whereas this way, because I'm using the sidebar to pick my numbers, I can keep it on highlight all the time. See, that's another one that's just, I just can't push my pen on it to move it round because of the glue dot. Say, so I'm experimenting with glue dots at the moment, ready to do a video on it. So I wanted to try out putting it in a couple of pens and finding the best way or the, the easiest way that I find or maybe even a few different ways that I find as the best to both put the glue dot in your pen and manipulate it, you know, so that it works perfectly. And I'm still sort of messing with that. So I'll do a video on it when it's all done. So they're done. That's done. So I've just got a few over there. And I do keep using the diamonds that I've already placed as reference. But yeah, I find this has been the most, the quickest way for me to get through a section is to keep it on the highlight function and use the search bar across the bottom. Let me try which way is the, there's two ways that the stoppers go in the trays and one of them is normally snugger than the other. Okay, that's the looser one. That's the one I want to be able to work with it. And after a period of time, I'll move it to the other way around if it gets looser. So now I'm just clicking down the numbers. So now I know four, three, three, I only need one. And it's let me pick one up. So we're going there. And there is one's highlighting at the bottom, but they're out of the section that I'm working on. Okay, questions. So Celine, this is, this is a question from, I think it's the last question that I've got from the June waffle. I think I then move on. Ooh. Okay, that didn't work. It's just rolled onto the floor. I might need to go get my other glue dot pen, see if that will work a bit better. I've had more time to mess with that one than I have with this one. Um, Sorry, Celine says she's loved the June waffle. She's looking forward to the advent and she says for the next waffle, what are your favourite board games or table games for the family? Ooh, there's a few different ones that we like. Um, we are fond of, you know, just a, a good old fashioned game of cards. We do like that. Okay, let me go back to this pen that's just got wax in it and see how it goes. Though this hasn't been filled up since the June waffle. Um, yeah, we do like a good old fashioned game of cards. We do enjoy playing cards. Um, games wise, let me think, Romeo. We do really like Romeo and get quite challenging, that one. Um, there's also a colour game that we got at Christmas. So you sort of pair up into teams and you, you have a selection of colours on a card. And then the game will ask you, you know, to name the colours of the Olympic rings or something. So you've got to pick out the five colours of that or the colours of, of Mr Bump from the Mr. Men. All sorts of different things like that. It'll ask you to pick the colours of. Um, and then you place those down in your, you know, your single players or your teams. 
you place those down and see who wins, who gets who gets the score. And then there's you know there's some different ones in there. There's some food ones. So jar of marmite. Um, what colour is a jar of marmite and all that sort of stuff. Uh, that was a very popular game. We like Cluedo. Cluedo's another good one. I think that's called something else. Um, oh, what's it called? I'm pretty sure it's called something else in America. Or maybe even some other countries as well. It's not called Cluedo. Oh, is it just called Clue? I think it might just be called Clue rather than Cluedo. Uh, the one where you have um, different rooms and you have Mr. White and Mr. Green and you've got to find out who murdered who in what room. We like to play that as well. And there's probably more that I've forgotten that the kids would tell me that I've forgotten. Um, but hey-ho, mum's allowed to forget stuff, aren't they? Um, Fee said, oh, with, she, with her purple tray, she used a colour catcher sheet to rub the tray to get rid of static. So in my last whip and chat, I mentioned that when I first go to use a tray, sometimes, and it does depend partly on the diamonds, as well as how soon the trays come off the printer, um, it can seem as though it's a little bit staticky um, and doesn't necessarily want to let go of the diamonds quite as easily. And after a little bit of time, that goes. Um, but Fee says she just wipes over it with a colour catcher and that works fine. Uh, she says it doesn't affect the tray in any way, no. I mean, these might print out of a printer, but believe me, that they're, they're not going anywhere. I don't think I could break that if I tried. Um, might be a bit different for somebody that's stronger than me, but um, I wouldn't say I'm weak, but I, I, I couldn't break the tray. I think it would take quite a bit to break the tray. Um... There is somebody else, I think, as well, that mentioned that. Let me just... Oh, yeah, so Liz says she wipes over it a tumble dryer sheet and round the spout as well, and she finds they just move more freely. Uh, she was worried that it may have affected the drill sticking on her canvas, but it doesn't. So that's good. OK, are we on to a new case yet? We are. So case number one... Of four, I've gone through all the numbers, so it must be all the later ones, and I just need one of these. I'm kind of hoping I'll come up to a colour in a moment that has a lot, because I have visions of me running out of something to talk about, or this video getting ridiculously long. But we'll see how we go. I'm just keeping tapping on all the numbers until I find a number that I need. This one's got a few more so I will tip some into my tray but I, I have to train myself with this time and painting in particular to only tip out a small amount because these trays hold more than you think they hold a lot more than what you think and because of that I could tip out what I think is a small amount and actually find out it's a huge amount. So I try to just tip out a small small amount and see how I go and then one up there. So we've obviously got I think it's a branch coming down here and that's what all these are part of. Okay. Oh, it's like it's getting somewhere, but it's not getting somewhere. How long have I been talking? 
20 minutes I've been talking and look at the amount that I've got done. Let me zoom in so you can actually see. You can't quite see what I'm supposed to be placing. No, I can't really get both in shot and still be close. So we'll do a bit zoomed in and then I'll do a bit more zoomed out because it's a very different type of painting this one. Um, so do let me know which you prefer when it comes to the heaven and earth design. I know on a, a normal painting a lot of you guys prefer it to be um, close up. You prefer to be able to see me putting the diamonds down and I get that but there's not as many colour changes on a normal painting even one with confetti I don't quite think it goes to the extreme that my heaven and earth design does um, so if you would prefer to, to be able to see more when it comes to the heaven and earth designs then do let me know I'll mix it up this time and then I might just, you know, do the bulk of it what you guys prefer and a little bit the other way. But I kind of feel it's okay when I'm placing the diamonds, you can see stuff. But then you end up with quite a lot of time where you might not be able to see be either fighting with a diamond in the pot or flipping through the colours on my tablet to find out which one I need next. Which is kind of what I was doing then. Tapping little buttons and just holding my diamonds there waiting. Um, okay, Tracy says, in double sided tape where the tape has lifted from the canvas, what do you call that and how do you fix that? So I don't know if it particularly has a name, it just sounds as though it is um, double-sided tape lifting, which is kind of annoying if it is, you know, that you do experience that. I know if you catch it soon enough when it first happens, then you can often put the tape back down with with the cover sheet so like if it came off with this you can put it back down and give it a good scratch and a rub so that the tape sticks and then try lifting the paper again and you normally get a better response um, but if you have missed it it depends on how big a piece as to what's the best thing to fix it you can use double sided tape because that's pretty much what what the ones with these opaque covers are is it's just double sided tape. You can buy this this paper stuff on a roll if you're talking a huge amount. The odd place gives you gives you some you know for an emergency if you need it though it kind of worries me if they give it you. It must be something that, that they've experienced a lot of to include that extra bit. If you're only talking a small corner that is maybe only a couple of pieces, a couple of, you know, diamond squares or something, then you could possibly just use um, like PVA or Elmer's glue or even I've heard of people using clear nail varnish and that can also work to, to just give something for the diamond to then adhere to the canvas and something that will adhere to the diamond as well. So there's a few options for that. Right, let me get those diamonds away and of course some of these pots are so full it's unreal. Okay what's next? 782 I just need a lonely little one. And this is when I like it when my pen picks it up nicely. 
so far I've found with the likes of the glue dots that I was using while they they do last ages I've nearly done um, a full 50 by 6 40 by 50 sorry 40 by 50 painting I've nearly done a full painting without changing the glue dot which is amazing for how many diamonds are on it but I do find that to start using a glue dot has taken a little bit of primping and preening of the glue dot to get it to nestle in properly Okay, we have one now with loads of colour. So let me find a question. And we're doing a lot of this symbol. <coughs> uh, Tony with diamonds has said, can you please do a video on your crat, please? Oh, is that cart? Okay, I first read that and I was gonna go, Tony, what are you talking about? <laughs> in the nicest possible way but I've just realized it's um it's just the wrong way around which is fine I do that all the time um I touch type and I do the for some reason I always type t-e-h it's only because many things like word correct it before I have chance to correct it myself uh, it's just one of the words that I always type the wrong way around. Uh, there is a couple of others, I just can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, will I do a video on my cart? Yes, I'm more than happy to do one of those. I will put it onto my sort of a video list. I do have a list of all sorts of video ideas and things that I want to do. I do try when I can while I do have a few things that are regular and I say regular you know like I'm trying to do at least a whip and chat a week um at the moment throughout the month of July I still have my three unboxings a week so while they're similar they are still of course different they're different companies different items things I've bought, things I've been gifted, you know, all sorts of different unboxings, but I try to vary what is up on a regular basis. Um, so I will put the cart down on my list, which would probably go into the box of something a little bit different. So for example, if I did a video of my craft room, I probably wouldn't do a video of my car in the same week. And I'd probably try and split it up. At the moment, I'm trying to split up my de-kittings. I have, I did the de-kitting of the winter tree last week. And when I did that de-kitting video, I had another two paintings sat here that also needed de-kitting in fact they're still sat here one of them I think I've penciled it in for being on Saturday I need to de-kit my custom painting from Homfun because I did sneak in the kitting up of the next custom before I de-kitted. Normally I'd de-kit and then kit up. But because of June being a waffle month um, and me not wanting to put up multiple de-kitting videos in one week because some people aren't keen on de-kitting, which is fair enough, so they don't want three a week. Some people could probably overdose on de-kitting and would probably want them all up in a week. However, they then wouldn't have any for weeks after that because I didn't have anything to de-kit. So it's for the benefit of both types of people that I do change it up. Um, but yeah, I will definitely put cart on my list. And as soon as I can, as soon as I probably have an empty, an empty house, if, you know, the bulk of the household go out, 
for any particular reason, probably normally various reasons for each person, then I will put down to take a video of my cart and show you. I think I did mention it in my craft space, so where I work in, um, in my conservatory. I did mention the cart in that, I'm pretty sure I did, but I'll do a bit more of a, a thorough go through of what's in it and do a more detailed one for you. <coughs> but yeah, if you want to find the other video, go to um, my channel, addmorezest.com, down here somewhere, provided I've put it in. Um, if you go down to, if you go to my website, under videos, and then I think it will be in the craft room section. I do show you the area that I work on in the conservatory. And I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know if I go through it fully, but I definitely give you a brief overview. And it might keep you going until I get around to filming the full one. So I hope that helps, Tony. And I'm glad I, I managed to work out what it was. <laughs> Because it's it's such a simple change of you know change of two letters, I would have kicked myself if I didn't work out what that was. Okay, Alicia has oh she's talked about the UK education, so it tends to be bracketed into key stages. So what they call key stages one to five which I have heard of and, of course, mentioned those in education. I don't know whether, well, I know those in education use it a lot um, because my daughter does. I don't know if parents do as well. My kids are a lot older, so it may be that it wasn't talked about as much when my kids were growing up, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but key stage one is what I called infants. So it's reception, year one and year two. Key stage two is junior school, which is years three to six. And then when they go to secondary school or high school, you have key stage three, which is years seven, eight and nine. So that's what we call sort of, or I used to call the first half of the school. Um, that's your working on subjects, but not necessarily working towards exams. There are many places that do start lessons towards exams in year nine now. But when I was in school, GCSEs didn't really get talked about apart from confirming, you know, what you wanted to do for a GCSE. You didn't actually start them until year 10. Um, and then key stage four is year 10 and 11. So that is your exam years. And that's where you work towards your final main school exams in each individual subject. And then um, Sixth Formal College are classed as Key Stage 5, which is Year 12 and Year 13. Uh, colleges, I don't think, tend to call them those particular years. As a general rule, colleges don't call them Year 12 and Year 13, I don't think. Not that my, you know, they're classed as Year 1 and Year 2 because the college is completely separate to school. Um, but I know many sixth form will class them as year 12 and 13. Um, and then she says from here, students can go into higher education, which is degree level and can range from level four to seven qualifications, depending on if you do a bachelor's, master's or PhD. Um, and the same levels can also be done through apprenticeships. So, yeah, I have heard of that because I know I have done a couple of 
level five and I think even a level seven qualification, maybe it's a level six qualification um, through my work. So those sorts of higher qualifications, higher levels of it um, can be done through through many different levels of higher education, whether you be, what is it they call a mature student? That's what they basically call if you're if you're not the normal or very close to the normal age of, of being in college. So, for example, if you're doing a course um, that, you know, if you're doing a course with others that college students may be doing or that age group and very close to that age group are doing, but you're older, you're classed as a mature student. Because um, I know I've done a couple of qualifications as a mature student. Makes me sound all grown up when really I'm not, I'm just old. Or older, if we're being nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is part of the UK education system. It has its ups and its downs, just like anything does. Um, but thank you for that, Alicia. You've put, definitely put it a different way to me. I've just gone by what I remember from when, you know, the kids were in school. Because I, I know GCSE-wise, they used to be graded... A through to G, I think. So A, B, C was what you needed or was preferred to get onto certain courses and into certain universities. And they've recently changed it to the numbering system. So I actually had two children that finished school with um, letters for their GCSEs. I then had one child that left high school with a bit of both. So my son had numbers for, I think it was English, Maths and Science. He came out with numbers, which were between one and nine. And then the rest were letters. And of course, all us parents got a little sheet explaining what the numbers actually meant. <laughs> because we we didn't know. Um, and then my youngest, has, who's just got her GCSEs, well, got her GCSE results last year in the middle of COVID. Um, I think all of hers are numbers. So they've all moved over to the number system now, which I still don't quite get. I still need the conversion sheet next to me. Um, I just know she was happy with what grade she got, so that'll do me. Um, and yeah, I was I was proud of them all. They all got good grades. They all paid attention um, and did the best that they can do. And that's all that I ask for. And their grades varied from each, from one child to another. It wasn't that they all got, you know, all got high or all got low or anything else. They just, they all did, they did good. They tried. Um, oh, so Ruth says on uh, the breakdown of my winter tree, she says you scored the diamond as two stars. So in my logbook, I did mark the diamonds down as being two stars. Um, and that was because they were quite small and gappy in places. She says, but you still kept the diamonds. Um, how would they have how bad would they have to be for you to not consider keeping them? So I think they'd have to be too big um, for me to consider not keeping them at all. I have thrown a load of diamonds. I think it was a very old Huacan painting. 
where I don't even know if I actually even finished the painting, it was that bad. That's when I threw them away. In relation to the, pay the diamonds being a two, but me still keeping them, is there's a couple of reasons to that. One, if I'm doing a project like this, so i.e. this heaven and earth designs, if you mix up good diamonds with not good diamonds, you actually find that overall the painting looks completely fine and looks great. You can get away with the odd diamond or the odd little sections of diamonds considering you know there's not big big blocks of colour here you know even even this block that was a lot of black still has loads of brown mixed in with it and you can't even see where I'm pointing but most of this is not big blocks of a single colour so because of that you, you don't really notice the other reason is, is if I ran out of a colour, I would take a smaller, but will still work and look okay from a distance, diamond over no diamond at all. And that's the reason I keep the ones, even if they're not what I'd class as, as really good quality is because they are primarily there for spares, they're not going to be used for long, and I know they're not. You know, there'll be many of them that I have put into my spare diamonds and I just will never touch. But I don't know which ones I would never touch, so I can't take action and, you know, get rid of the ones that I'll never touch because there may be ones that I do need. And I really don't want to wait for China to send me a replacement diamond colour if I happen to have run out on a painting. I don't want to have to wait for that. Um, and I would always have the fear that it's never actually going to turn up anyway. Um, so I'd rather just have some in my spares and just not go there, just get them out of my spares and, and move on. Um, so some of these questions now are from, um, not just from the whip and chat, they're just questions asked within the YouTube comments on various different videos. Um, and I've kept them in there just because sometimes it, it might be that it, it is helpful for some people for me to discuss those sorts of topics. If one person's asking, there's probably one person wondering is what my thought is. So I thought I'll keep them in and then I'll type up the answer for the person who's asked it on the actual video so that they get the reply as well. Oh, I nearly lost where I was going then. This is why sometimes I just have to mark myself off on here often. Especially when it starts getting to the point where I've got quite a few just sort of little gaps. Which on a normal painting with symbols underneath, I love those little gaps because I can go through pushing all the diamonds in and hearing that satisfying little click and they all go in the right place. But sometimes on this heaven and earth design, it can be just a little bit confusing, especially when I've not done 939 yet, which is a black square on my chart. So it partly looks as though it's been filled in, but of course there's no diamond there. Um, so what do we, yeah, Tammy said, would you kit your paintings up when you unbox them? Um, she got a few on sale, unboxed them and stored them. I don't think I'd ever fully kit them up when I unboxed them, as in put them all into their individual pots 
and all that sort of stuff, mainly because I have so many. If I only ever ordered, for example, if I only was able to order or chose to order when I'd finished a painting or nearly finished one, so basically I'd ordered it to be my next painting to do, then I, I would potentially kit that up when I unbox it. Because I have quite a few and I never know which one I'm going to either do, want to do, or I'm going to let the decision app decide I'm going to do, it's easier for me not to kit them all up because the storage of them kitted up takes far more room, even though I still have the storage. Um, it's not like a... It's not like the you know the storage is still empty, um, but it is just all thrown in a pot. So trying to find the kitted up version of the diamonds could potentially be harder for me. I find it easier just to label them up. So I label up the canvas and then I label up the diamonds um, with stickers that we sell. And I keep the diamonds in one place and I keep the canvas in another. And that works for me. Oh, box number three. We're moving on to the pink box. I still feel like I've got a lot to go. I might have to make heaven and earth design every other week. I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. Whether to do you know, a bit of heaven and earth design one week in my whip and chat and then do a bit of a, another painting, whatever painting I happen to be working on, on another week. I just don't know because my heaven and earth design, I don't half need to get it done. I do need to feel as though I'm making some progress on it. And a whip and chat is kind of a way to get that done. I just don't know if I'm going to have enough time to do it every week. Maybe I aim for every week, but if it isn't, you guys know why. I got busy. Even this week, I got busy slash lazy. Um, we had some electrics done on... Saturday which meant the electric was turned off for a period of time so I already knew that before Saturday came around so I made sure that I got Saturday's video prepared because sometimes I'll film that in advance and sometimes I'll film it on a Saturday morning because I'm not working I made sure I got that filmed in advance and I was like that's fine I can do the whip and chat on Sunday morning and then I think I just, I, I did a load of shop stuff on the Saturday, anything that didn't need electric. Because while my camera is battery operated, my lights are on the mains, they're plugged into the mains. So with the electric being off, I couldn't have my lights, which meant I couldn't film. Plus, I needed to be about in case the electrician wanted something. And of course, to make that brew when the electric came back on. Um, and yeah, then Sunday, I think it just, it took me so long to actually get going in the morning. And I knew I had to do a Heaven and Earth Designs weapon chat. I knew it, I, you know, if, if I didn't just do it, it was going to be one of those projects that just sat there. Which it has done for the rest of this year um so yeah i just decided to allow myself sunday and just take the pressure off um, so i might see how it goes with the whip and chats and maybe get some get some in of heaven and earth designs hopefully mainly if not at least every other will hopefully work 
because I've actually got two heaven and earth designs on the go and that's before I even think about preparing or kitting up the heaven and earth design canvases that I got. So I did also get the canvas direct from heaven and earth design. Only one of them are mine, the other two are Megan's, they're her problem. Um, I did get one directly from heaven and earth design that I also want to do but I need to get at least one if not both of these finished first because I've got this one in fact maybe that's what I could do maybe I could alternate between the two because the other heaven and earth design that I've got has only got 15 colours which means I won't be changing out the diamonds as often which will make it a quicker painting to do. Maybe I'll do that. I think that might be a good option. And then you guys can still see the paintings coming to life. And though they are both squares, I might throw the odd round whip and chat in there every now and then, but I think that's what I'll try and do. I'll try and do a whip and chat on each of my heaven and earth designs alternate and see how that goes so this one just for those that have, have have been watching the whole of this whip and chat going what is it you're doing <laughs> um, i do have details and and more videos explaining it on my website um but this is the chart I'm working on on my tablet is from heavenandearthdesigns.com and it is a cross stitch pattern. So I'm working on a cross stitch pattern but instead of doing a little stitch per time I'm putting a diamond per time and I am primarily using spare diamonds that have been left over from three years worth of diamond painting. Some of them and, and many of them have been ever so kindly gifted to me by subscribers. So I have some other subscribers spare diamonds as well. Uh, many people helped out right at the beginning when I when I had gaps all over my canvas because I hadn't got the colour yet. Uh, many people were kind, so, so kind to send me diamonds and there are many of those diamonds in this painting in various places. Uh, but yeah, it is primarily spares. I think there has been the odd colour that I purchased, I think maybe two or three colours, that I did purchase some for and that was due to the volume of that colour needed in this painting. Uh, some of them that I needed thousands for, so for example 310, I haven't purchased those because I always have 310 left over and many, many paintings take 310 or you know have 310 in them it's one of the most popular colors used in a painting and because of that I knew that even while I may not have had enough diamonds to finish the painting when I started I would have enough paint enough diamonds by the time I got to finish or got to need them and if anybody has seen my big bag of 310s, they will know that I have plenty of 310s to use, which is partly why I decided to purchase a second chart from Heaven and Earth Designs. And this second chart only uses 15 colours. It's a black and white image which of course includes grey and all sorts of things for shading. And I purchased that 
purposefully for the fact of using up some three tens. And it's a gorgeous painting, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a really nice painting, so I'm happy with, with the image that I chose, but yeah, a, a big driver of me doing the second painting was getting to use up some more three tens, because I have so many. And I quite like the challenge of doing a canvas, a, a diamond painting on a blank canvas. There is a couple of subscribers that have done this same image, which is the Little Dreamers Max, Little Dreamers Tree, super sized max colour. I think that's what I've got. It's the big one. It's about 40 centimetres across, I think it is but it is over two metres long. It is not for the faint hearted. It is a challenge, but I do know of, I think two, I'm pretty sure there's two people. One was a few months ago, one was a bit more recent, I think, that have started this painting after me. Bear in mind, I started this project about two years ago. I just then haven't done any for at least six months. Um, yeah, they started this painting and have finished it, which is absolutely amazing dedication. And it looks stunning, absolutely stunning once it's finished. Um, and I'm pretty sure the second person has finished it. If they haven't, they've definitely got a lot further than me. And it has sort of spurred me on to want to see, you know, I want to see more of, of the interesting items. And um, there's a little, I think there's a little fairy a bit further up, which I'll, I'll show you when I zoom out that has sort of come to life over time, over these sections that I've been doing. And I kind of want to get to, you know, the nice, the next little bit of, of something, a little pop of, of wonder in this tree design. I'm itching to get there. So I'm hoping you guys keep asking for the Heaven and Earth Design Whipper Jacks if I go off them. So if you find that I've done, you know, two or three whip and chats that don't include a Heaven and Earth Designs, pull me back, will you? A lot of the time, I know I have gone to do one before and I've realised that my tablet wasn't charged and that's what stopped me. So I do need to make sure my tablet stays charged. In fact, I might try and start leaving it in this craft room because then it will be easy to bob on to charge. Um, keep my tab, because I couldn't work on, on a paper one anymore. I started on paper because Pattern Keeper wasn't out, or at least it wasn't well known when I first started this diamond painting, but since Pattern Keeper has come out, it is a game changer. I do have a video on me using the app as well, using the Pattern Keeper app, um, on how I use it anyway. I know some cross stitchers use it a bit different, but how I like to use it for diamond painting, I do have a video on that and it's, yeah. It, it makes the whole thing a lot more possible. Oh, crazy cat lady has said, what is your favourite pie? Mine is either apple or lemon meringue. Oh, it's one of those. I, I'm okay with, if I had to pick, I think I would probably say apple pie. Though I do like, I probably eat more mince pies, though they're only at Christmas. I don't tend to eat many pies. It's not 
as big a thing as it can be in some other countries. I'm more of a cake. I do like my cake. Um, I would probably take a piece of cake over a piece of pie any day of the week um, or a cheesecake over a pie but I'd probably still take cake over cheesecake mm. but yeah I think I'd have to say apple would be my favourite I think the only reason I tend to eat more mince pies is because there'll be mince pies about at Christmas whereas we hardly ever think to have apple pies about whereas if you put both of them on a plate and offered me to choose one I'd choose apple and if it's all oh, warm apple pie that'd be nice <laughs> you're getting me hungry uh, oh Susan um, she says she can't believe how many colours are in that painting so this is where this is on my kitting up video for the latest custom piece that I'm doing which is from I think it's Ran Rachel Manhui store I really do need to check that out because I keep saying it and I don't know whether I'm saying it right or wrong um, yeah it came with 70 colours in that painting so she says she can't believe how many there are I know it, it's crazy believe me I'm working on it at the moment and it is I mean this confetti is worse because of course this has what 239 colours in this cross stitch jar which frankly is a redonkulous amount of colours but it you know does give you a good pattern um but yes yeah, 70 for that diamond painting is epic um she says she does think about this question every time i mention the comparison paintings and she says what are you going to do with them all when they're finished uh she says our various family members getting them as a remembrance i'm just really curious yeah, I think unless they turn out awful, um, my plan is to gift them to family members. There, there are multitudes of family members um, that, of course, also loved my mother-in-law. So I may gift them to them. I kind of wish I'd gone for the smaller one in the purposes of if I was going to gift them the smaller one potentially you know would be able to be there as nice as a remembrance rather than a statement but it is going to be one of them that I you know ask their opinion I think about whether it is something that they are interested in and of course it depends how they turn out if she's not looking her best because of, of the colouring in the painting then it, it's not fair to um, give it to somebody who may feel as though they have to take it um, so I'm going to make the final decision when when they're all done and see how it goes okay we'll zoom back out because I had to change the battery and therefore it zoomed it back out. So now's as good a time as any to zoom you out, or maybe I'll just try and zoom in a bit. Let's see if I can move that over without bashing the lights. It's very hard for, okay, that's the lowest I can get that to go. So maybe you can see a little bit of what's happening on both screens, depending on the size of your screen. Okay, where was I? This one. It's like, where's, where's the symbol I'm looking for? Um, but yes, yeah, Susan, I'm hoping that they will be good enough and, you know, look nice enough once framed for maybe people to 
to offer them to family members anyway. There they are, pretty big, so we'll see. Um, I think I just gave away the last, the last lot of, of diamond paintings anyway. The main thing I want to do with them is the comparison. After that, I'm, I'm not hugely fussed, and I know I probably should be. It is a fair amount of money, but also if I worry about what I'm going to do with them so much, um, then it'll probably end up being that I won't want to do comparisons again because it's 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 too much pressure. <laughs> um, oh, okay, three, three, seven, one. I know I've got a few of those. Next question. Oh, Diana, she says, please. So tell me, please, if you only use one micro glue dot in your pen. She didn't have luck the few times she tried them, but she'll give them a go. Her favourite so far is Museum Quake Hold Putty. Ooh. Um, I actually didn't use micro glue dots. And this may, I'm, I'm thinking I do need to get some in order to be able to, you know, do a fair check of what is best and what works the best in regards to glue dots. All I had in was, I think the 10 mil. Hang on, let me just figure out how far out I am for this painting. Okay, that's why. Because if I go to search, yeah, I hadn't marked this colour off. There we go. I hadn't marked one symbol where I'd actually put the diamond, but I didn't mark that I'd put the diamond. So it was confusing me. Um, what size are they? Let me have a look. 10 mil. So they're 10 mil in diameter. Um, oh, see look, this is what happens when I switch from the search to the marker function. Uh, the 10 mils in diameter, but what I actually did was chop them into four. So I chopped them into quarters and then I put one quarter in the pen that I was using on the Mr. Quackers Whip and Waffle. And then I just tried another quarter in the pen that I was using this evening. The difference is, is the pen I was using for Mr. Quackers was um, an ever everlasting tip, whereas the one I've just tried it in in this blue pen is a normal normal pen tip like you get with with every bog standard pen <coughs> and I don't know whether those tips are actually smaller and it won't go as deep I need, I need to have a mess I probably need to get a pair of tweezers and try and make it go a bit more into the tip Okay, last box. Let me get them out from behind packing boxes. Now it looks like I've not got a lot left, but I also kind of think this is still going to take a while. We'll have to see how end up this, how long this video ends up, because that will determine how long I can keep it up. I know when I've done ones in the past, I think I've whip and waffled for a bit. And then I've gone and done some myself. And then I've come back. But to be honest, it still tends to take the same amount of time. The difference is whether I can make funky noises while drinking a brew. Depends, you know, whether I'm on camera or not. <laughs> That's the only real difference. So we may as well give you guys a long video. 
just depend how much I mix it up depending on how long it takes. And I think I feel it more because I've had uh, I've got so many de-kitting videos to do and kitting up and then not short ones. So the kitting up of the man who we Rachel was a long video and de-kittings can be a long video. Oh, there's another one, missed one. Let's not do that because when I miss one, it makes things worse later. It's always tempting to try and do some of these ones that highlight further down, but it does not work out. Even if there's only one there, it doesn't work out. It just comes around and bites me. Right, let's see if I can... And this is where I'm struggling to see where each section, where my lines are, to grid up into the 10 sections so it can make it a little bit harder to find where each square is, which is sometimes where doing it in the symbol order you want to do it in can help. But I find that highlighting them in this way saves me personally loads of time from touching these top buttons and it's when I start touching the top buttons that I get myself in a muck fuddle yeah. and that's when something normally goes wrong if all I have to do is highlight when I'm done by just swiping over them and then mark it as tick done when I want it to fill in the colour I'm less likely to make mistakes though I have still on occasion put diamonds in the wrong place on this one and quite often it's been a similar colour so I've just gone with it and I've actually not changed them and you wouldn't be able to tell. I actually have one diamond over here in the far corner on the far edge that has come off, probably from me moving about the painting a fair amount over the last few months and not actually working on more of it. And you know what, it needs to be a greenish colour. So while I have a green, I'm gonna go and put that one in it. Because it is, because the one that was missing is actually one of these right on the edge. Like we're not talking anywhere in the middle. And I do have um, sort of grid numbers down the side. So at the moment it tells me that this bottom row here on the other side I've got 320, so it's 320 rows down is the bottom of this. So because I've got little markers, I could possibly have quite easily, without too much trouble, worked out which colour was missing. But it also was, was just, yeah, too much. So I've filled it with another green and I'm okay with that. I wouldn't want to do it, you know, all the time or a lot of the time on purpose because, you know, the colours are in a certain place to give you the design and the look of the image. And of course, you know, to get the complete image, they do sort of matter which one is where, but you can get away with the odd one without it looking ridiculous. And as long as the colour's similar enough, if I found that, you know, I'd put a bright orange diamond where I should have put a black one, then I'm likely to take it out. If I found that I was working on a section that had a lot of 
say 939 and 310 and I'd got one of those mixed up now nah, I probably wouldn't take it out unless it was noticed quick enough you know when it was just a matter of, of scooting it over no nah, I wouldn't bother it makes it unique if somebody was able to take the time or the effort to compare mine to somebody else's to find the little differences albeit plus some of my colours have different shadings in the symbols anyway so I actually have some colours in here that I know the orange was one that I definitely spotted um, that actually had a few different shades all mixed in and I used at least two or three of them on this section the only difference is if they were very connected together I tried to keep them the same shade but if there was a, a gap then I didn't worry about it nice bit of lime green ish actually looks a bit like baby poop colour baby not well colour um, but that one probably you know would give some nice effect and probably wouldn't go as well if I got it in the middle of the tree I've got quite a bit of this one now so let's let's start filling in some of these gaps This is, this is the benefit when you start coming near the end. It's like you just get to click in. And I actually find that sometimes having diamonds, you know, the, the quality of the diamonds that can vary can sometimes help when it comes to filling in these sections. So if I look and see that a gap for me to put a diamond in is really, really tight, then I'll use one of the slightly smaller diamonds in my tray and it just helps accommodate the bigger diamond that I may have placed down earlier and this tray's actually got a couple of different shades as well so I'm going to use the darker shade where I'm only putting one diamond but then when I've done that little group together I've used all the same shade So I don't mind that I have more than one shade in there. It's the colour 3830 in somebody's world. <clears throat> okay, what are, ooh, we have got some of the purple 3834. I think this is what this is one of the colours that I struggled with at the beginning. I had loads of gaps that needed this colour. And it may not look like I have a lot now, but I actually have enough to finish the painting. It just seemed to be that I never got it in a painting when I first started. And I may not have even got it in a painting since. It very, very way, bleh, may very well be that that colour was gifted to me from somebody else. I'm pretty sure it was gifted to me because I'm pretty sure I remember going through and filling in all the gaps after it was sent to me. I don't know if I've added any of my own spares to it since. But there are a few colours that I've actually finished using. So 3843, I no longer have it in my case, I've actually put it back. 3844, I've got all those diamonds. I've only got one more that I need to place somewhere on this canvas. I just haven't come across it yet. Okay, 3853. So we're getting nearer to being finished. This is where I try not to tip out too many diamonds. I've got quite a few different shades in this one as well. But I don't mind because it's all going in with the shading of orange. The thing is, I've just took my eye away from the canvas. That one it needs to go in. 
trying not to lose track. Oh, nearly there. You're in for an epic one. Pretty sure I've seen that yet, two of them. Oh, we've got two stuck together. So I'm going to see if they come apart. If they don't, they can go in my bin. But I normally just try and push my nail in between the two. And they've come apart. So, oh, it's these two down here. I was looking at that one thinking, where's the one near it? And that's not actually where I needed to put it anyway. Okay, three, eight, five, seven, onto the bottom row. Bottom row of diamonds. Not got too long to go. And this is what's filling in all the gaps. Okay, filling in one there, one there. One there and one there. So that looks to be a tree trunk. Oh, I did do that one as well. And the past, I think, if I remember rightly, which I say, it has been a while. I think I actually use most of these colours across the bottom row to finish up. So I always get dead excited that I've got to the bottom row and then I use pretty much every single colour. Okay, that one up there. Maybe this section will be a little bit kinder to me. Mm. While well, it's my first time back doing this painting in a while. And then that one up there. I think I've missed one though. I've got a feeling that that one at the top is one that I should have done already. I'll find out at the end. And at least by doing, by keeping my case in DMC order, I did originally have it here, I did originally change it into symbol order. And it was great when I was looking for a symbol. But since I've had this app, it's easier in DMC because I can, I, I have missed that one at the top. And it is a gap on my canvas as well. So it's not like I've, oh, and I've just put that diamond in it. See, look, this, this is what happens. I get in tired. I'm trying to get it out with my straightener, but I think I might have to. Have I got tweezers? I have somewhere. I just don't know if they're here. Let me try. Okay, I've managed to push two out. I'm not making life easy for myself, am I? Let me get, let me get that back in. I've tried not to have to go hunting too far for tweezers because then I'll forget which one it was but it is close to the edge. So it's that one I want out. Okay, let me get that back in my tray. Let's try again. I don't want that one, I want this one. So let's use that diamond to push those back up. See if I catch it like that, and it's one that I can deal with, then I'll do it. If I find that, you know, it's one that I did ages ago or it's in the middle and I can't quite find where it is that I'm supposed to do it, that's when I'll leave it. Okay, so that is all of those done. But I do still have 
this one square that I've managed to miss. And now if I go to the search function, it tells me that it's actually 336. So I finished it, I've missed it right in the beginning. So I can get out my tray that holds 336 and then fish it out, which is actually a dark blue. So it is different to the brown I was trying to put in its place. Highlighter, tick done. Okay. And I've had about three different pens while we've been doing this. <laughs> and I've just seen that I've got two diamonds floating around on my desk. Well, they've gone in the bin. Okay, so can you see here where we've got a fairy? If you actually look up really close, you can't, it's hard to see her. And there's another one up here. So I think that's like a fairy. That is, and I think that is. We've got like the top of the tree. And then this is like a heart in the tree with a bird. So I'm kind of hoping that the further down we go now, the more we'll see. I do need to prep this canvas though. So as you can see, there is no line for where it hits 10 squares because this canvas didn't come with it. I've had to draw them on. So that might be something that I need to do before our next session on this Heaven and Earth Designs. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I've been waffling for far too long. You guys have got an epic video for a Tuesday night that'll probably take you all week <laughs> to do, but to listen to. But I do thank you so much for joining me. Please do keep asking your questions down below um, because I am hoping that there'll still be another whip and chat coming on Sunday. I just might work on the other heaven and earth design with less colours. Maybe mix it up between the two. But let me know which for you was better for you while I'm working on the heaven and earth designs so that we can get this nailed in so that we can get them done week on week and get this picture finished. Thanks for watching. Speak to you all again soon.